So one interesting type of attack that we can do is known as a file path traversal attack. And the way that it works is that we trick the server into retrieving a file that we want it to retrieve um, through a legitimate request, say something to load an image or to load a different file. The idea is that the server is looking for a specific file and we can convince the server to look for a different file um, and make it think that uh, potentially we have permissions to access those files because the request is coming from the web server, not from us. So. In this example, we're going to try to retrieve the etc slash password file from um, a Linux server. In general, this serve this file is a very um, common one that exists on all Linux servers for the most part, and it typically contains information about users as well as user groups that exist on the actual server. So it's typically considered to be quite privileged information. So um, in general, we wouldn't want people to be able to access this, but with this sort of vulnerability, we're able to do exactly that. So let's head over to the lab and take a look at what is going on. So in order to understand this, what we need to do is we need to just, um, we'll turn on our proxy intercept. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to view the details of one of these. So you'll see the very first request gets the product ID, right? So it, it provides the product ID. So we do that. And then once the page loads, um, this is just like a, an academy header. We don't really care about that. This is what we care about. You'll see that it gets an image and it provides the file name of that image. So with this, I can send this to my repeater and we can work with this request because this request is essentially asking for an image off the server. So when I send this request, what I get back is the actual image. So you can see it looks like a lot of, uh, a lot of garbage, but uh, when we render it, we get the actual image itself. And um, in general, we can try like changing the, the image URL and see what we get. We get no such file in this case. So um, we can understand what files actually exist and what files don't. And furthermore, we can actually use specific directory characters to access things outside of this file directory. So you can imagine that when we're loading files out of here, like when we actually load a legitimate file, um, it's loading from a specific directory in the web page. Now, understanding which directory we're actually loading from can be a little bit tricky to do. It's not always something that's present to us, but in general, we can assume that we're in some sort of images directory in general. And if we're on Linux and um, I think even Windows as well, if we put dot dot backslash, it means move up one directory. So it starts in the images directory, that dot dot tells us to move up one directory. If we keep putting these dots, it will just keep moving up directories until it reaches the top level directory. Once it reaches the top level directory, the dot dot does nothing. So the idea is that we add enough dot dots to get us for sure to the top level directory. And then we navigate to the file that we want to navigate to. In this case, I know that in the ETC folder is where password is stored. That's just like a general thing that Linux servers typically have. So if I do this and I send this request, if it works successfully, I should get the contents of that file, which if I go to raw, you'll see it loaded all of the contents of that file. So this is the idea of a file path traversal. We can simply put these dot dot slashes in to move us up one directory every single time. And then we can just try to load a file from somewhere that we know exists. So this is a very simple sort of exploit that we can do, and it works very well whenever you want to load something from a web page, like on an image or a file. Um, if they don't pr properly protect what things can be actually loaded, you can do this sort of exploit. Um, it's very common in a lot of different applications, really, because a lot of people assume that you're going to request something that is actually legitimate and don't know that you'll be able to, you know, work through Burp Suite to manipulate that request to get something specific like this. So this is generally the idea of a file traversal and how we can do it through Burp Suite. 